You know what happened on July 19th? Sixty-four years, A.D. 64, the great fire of Rome. Everyone knew that Nero started the fire. The populace of the city, well aware of it, Nero had a penchant for building things, and uh, the general population was pretty much convinced, as were Roman historians of that day, that it was Nero himself who had the fires set, and Nero himself who watched the fires burn so that he could rebuild Rome for his own glory. And the city burned for three days and then had kind of a pause, and then it lit up again with greater ferocity and destroyed much of Rome. And the city was a waste. Nero had to find someone to blame because everyone knew it was him. And so he blamed a scapegoat. He found a scapegoat, and the scapegoat was the followers of Jesus, Christians. And Nero said it was the Christians who burned Rome. And the spin began, and the lies began, and the slander began. And you say, how could it be possible that anyone could blame the Christians? Well, there was a lot of misunderstanding about the early church. The early Christians were not really clearly identified yet from the Jews. Christians were considered to be just a sect of the Jewish faith. And there was already an anti-Semite mood in Rome. And so there were certain persecutions and slanders that the Jewish community faced. So to add that to the Christians was no small step. Christians participated in a regular, uh, on a regular occasion in the Lord's Supper. Uh, it was called uh, the, the agape meal, a love feast. But because communion was rather secret, in other words, it was really only for followers of Jesus. Other people weren't there. Other people didn't see it. Other people didn't experience it. But they heard about these Christians who had this love feast. And the spin began that it was actually an orgy, that communion and the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, a love feast, the love agape, the agape of God, that it was an orgy. And what happened at the communion service, what happened at the regular gathering of the church for the Lord's Supper? Well, the word spread that they ate a man's body and drank a man's blood, that the Christians were cannibals. And the spin continued, and the slander continued. At the same time, the populace was hearing preachers preach about the annihilation of this world that would be consumed in fire. They were speaking of the second coming of Christ, when all things would be made new, and this world would be consumed in the glory of God's fire and judgment, and all things would be made right and new. But the spin on that was pretty easy, wasn't it, to say it's these Christians who are living debauched lives, cannibals who eat their own children, who speak of nothing but fire and destruction. So Nero blamed the Christians, and the Christians suffered terribly. Nero had Christians rolled in tar, staked, in his gardens and set a fire so that at night the Christians burning alive would light his gardens in the evening. Nero had Christians sewn into the skins of wild animals and then he would set his hunting dogs loose on the Christians to watch them run them down and tear them apart while they were still alive. Unspeakable horror and persecution in the church. And from that time on, the life of every Christian was at risk. This Peter whom Jesus said would one day be led someplace he didn't want to go. But he said, follow me. This Peter didn't deny Christ. Through all the persecution, he never gave up, never gave in, never backed down. He was filled with the spirit of the living God that compelled him to stand up on the day of Pentecost and preach to the thousands gathered in Jerusalem, and 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ on that day. Now, these many years later, this same Simon Peter, this same Peter wrote 1st and 2nd Peter. The letters to the church during this time of horrible persecution with the intention of helping these Christians stay faithful. He said, have hope, have courage, do not give up, do not give in. Jesus is Lord. Follow him. And people followed the Christ and 
in 67. Tradition has it that Peter, who was in Rome, was crucified. And when he was told his sentence that he would be crucified because he was a Christian, he asked permission to be crucified upside down, head down, because he said he was not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his master. It may not be part of the story that's told very often. The untold story of a beginning because his brother said, here is the Christ, and an ending that encouraged the entire church to stay faithful and true. Oh, be strong, church. Whatever you face, whatever trial, whatever grief or sorrow or difficulty or challenge, don't give in, don't give up, back down. Or back down. Live with hope, live with strength, live with courage. And memorize 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 12. We're all doing it. You do it too. And it will help you as it helps all of us to live a life of faith.